So in this problem, we have a, we have a wall with three regions. Uh, the left side is fully insulated, so there's no heat that's being transferred uh, into that direction. Um, and then we have a section of steel, uh, which has no heat generation, a section of nuclear fuel in the center, which does have nuclear uh, heat generation, and then another section of steel, uh, where conduction is happening. And then on the outside, we have a cooling fluid at T infinity uh, with a certain heat transfer coefficients. Um, so we are, yeah, so we're given, uh, if, we're, if we assume that we're given the values of the heat generation and the um, thermal conductivities of the steel and the fuel, um, what we want to find is actually the temperature distribution for the entire region of the wall. So we want to find the distribution, um, or sorry, uh, in the fuel, fuel as a function of the heat generation, the thermal activities, the length of each section, and uh, T infinity. So what we can do um, is firstly write down our assumptions. Uh, we want to assume that uh, everything is happening at steady state and that there's only 1D, one dimensional heat generation or heat conduction. 1D, ah, you assume that one, the system is one dimensional and we have steady state. Um, so the first thing we can do is start from the heat diffusion equation, uh, which says di by di x of k di t by di x plus di by di y k di t by di y plus di di z is a generation is equal to rho cp di t um, by the change in time. So we can now apply our assumptions. Um, because we've said that it's a one-dimensional case, all the terms in the y and z direction go to zero. And um, we've also said the steady state, so the right side also goes to zero. Um, we can also assume that we have a constant um, k value over here. Um, OK, so what we can do is actually solve this differential now, uh, or simplify it. So we have that k di squared t by di x squared plus generation is equal to zero. Um, just solving for the temperature profile. You know that di squared x by uh, t by di x squared is equal to minus q over k of the uh, fuel, actually. And when we integrate, we get di t by di x is equal to minus q over k x plus a constant. The full temperature profile is equal to minus q over 2kf x squared plus c1x plus c2. Okay, um, so the next thing we can do is actually an energy balance about this wall, so the um, intersection between the steel and the nuclear fuel. Because we know that there, because on the left side, we have no heat that's, um, that can permeate in this direction. We actually know that the energy balance at this point, we have fuel, steel. So if we're just zooming into this point over here, we know that energy in has to be energy out, has to be equal to energy out, um, because we're at a steady state condition. Um, so because of that, we know that at x equals to minus L over here, um, because we're centering the zero axis at the center of this region, um, the flux must equal zero because there's no heat that's being um, transferred across the boundary. So by we can actually apply Fourier's law here, which will give that the flux is equal to minus k fluid of the field di t by di x, uh, which we've said is equal to zero. Um, so this essentially gives us a solution for, or this allows us to solve, us, solve for the constant in C1 um, because we actually have this temperature profile. So it says that di t by di x is equal to zero. Um, substituting in this profile over here, minus q over kf 
that x is at minus l plus c1 is equal to 0, giving us that the constant c1 is equal to q over kf minus q over kf times l. Um, so now we can substitute c1 into our full temperature profile, giving us that tx is equal to minus q over 2k x squared minus q over kf l x plus c2. Um, so now we still need one more piece of information um, because we still have one more constant. So the next thing we can do is um, naturally an energy balance at the other boundary of the wall. So in between the fuel and the steel on uh, this side. So um, because we actually know that all the energy that's generated within this section will have to be eventually convected or removed by heat convection um, from this cooling fluid over here on the right-hand side. So if we want to consider the boundary and we're doing everything per unit area, um, because we have a planar wall with a constant cross-sectional area, and this region looks something like this, where you have the fuel with heat generation, a steel wall, and coolant fluid. Um, so as we said, uh, we want to draw a thermal circuit over here, just so we understand everything. So we're going to call this Ts1. There's some resistance, Ts2, and then we have T infinity, eventually. Um, and we have a flux that's entering to the right side, and we're just going to call that uh, Q prime prime. Um, so now we can actually equate the heat generation to the heat that's convected. So from that, we get Q times 2L is going to equal to Q prime prime because um, Q dot is equal to is a um, heat energy per unit volume. Um, so by multiplying it by the length that we have across, uh, that gives us the energy per unit area, uh, which matches the units over here. So now we want to consider conduction with Newton's law. Uh, because we know that all the flux that travels from um, the steel region by conduction will also need to be convected out. Uh, so we get this equality that says that uh, the flux is equal to the driving force, so Ts1 minus Ts2 over the resistance. And as we know, for, a, uh, for con conduction, the resistance is equal to the length B over K of the steel. But this is also equal to the heat that is convected, which is the H the fluid times T S two minus T infinity. So um, if we substitute this equation over here with the right side, uh, we can get that Q times two L is equal to H F times T S two minus T infinity. So we'll note that the only variable that we actually don't know and aren't given is Ts2 over here. Uh, so we can simply solve for that, calculate that, um, which gives us that Ts2 is equal to Q times 2L divided by Hf plus T infinity. So now we can substitute this into the equality over here. Um, in order to solve for Ts1, um, because our goal is to basically get a boundary condition for the central section for the nuclear field. So if we substitute that, uh, that gives us that the flux is equal to Ks over B times Ts1 minus Q2L over Hf. Uh, minus T infinity. Okay. Um, so when you isolate for Ts1, you get that is equal to Q times 2LB over Ks plus Q 2L over H plus T infinity. So the last thing we want to do is to substitute 
this value, because all of these are known, this is just a number, into our temperature profile over here. Um, so we want to say that at TL, this is equal to TS1, which is equal to Q2LB over KS plus Q2L over H plus T infinity. And all of that is equal to minus, uh, start this on the next line, equal to minus QL squared over 2K minus QL squared over K plus C2. So now we have something that uh, we can solve for C2. Um, that is equal to T infinity plus QL times 2B over KS plus 2 over H plus 3 over 2L over KF. Um, this is simply algebra. It might be good practice, but as long as you have this part of the uh, problem set up, you should be uh, pretty much done and almost solved the question already. Um, so the last thing we actually want to do is draw the temperature profile. Uh, and we're going to extend it so we can just draw the profile of the entire uh, region, including the different volumes. So we know that at the left boundary, uh, the flux is equal to zero, which means that uh, this is temperature minus L, L, N, L plus B. And because the flux is zero, we also know that the slope of the temperature profile is actually zero. And this is true all the way until we hit this boundary uh, where we actually have the nuclear field. Within this nuclear field region, um, you can see here that we'll have a quadratic shape. Um, so this is quadratic. I'm just going to make note of the important points. Di t by di x is equal to zero. Um, and then within this steel region over here, because we don't have any heat generation happening, uh, we simply get a linear profile. And lastly, whenever we have a convection happening, the temperature drops off quickly and then eventually approaches T infinity. Um, so that is the temperature profile that you would get for the system.